you can do it if you decide that it's worth doing and you want to. You can make it happen. My journey to the field of social work uh, was a lengthier one that I would wish upon anyone else. I, it took about 10 years to find the profession after I earned my undergraduate degree. And I'm embarrassed to say that uh, initially, my approach to finding what I was supposed to be doing was largely trial and error, and I wasn't very good at it. But eventually, um, after trying a number of different things, uh, I ran into someone with the uh, odd uh, initials after her name, MSW, and I asked her what that stood for, never having seen it before. And she told me that she was a social worker and uh, took the time to explain to me what it was she did. And she was only a couple of sentences in when I realized that's what I was supposed to be doing. And uh, I got very passionate about it and excited because I'd been looking for um, my pathway for years and wasn't really satisfied with the jobs I was doing. I was looking for something that I sensed was probably more of a calling. And uh, I just immediately knew that I'd found it. So I went back and took a bunch of prerequisites because all of my, I'd been out of school for long enough that um, my, the credit I would have earned for the courses I took as an undergraduate, uh, psychology and sociology major had all expired. So I had to retake some things and then apply to the MSW program I went to. And uh, I was motivated enough that I, I went back and did that and applied and got in and uh, things have been rolling ever since. You know, it's a powerful feeling to, uh, to sense that you're where you're supposed to be. I think when people ask me what a social worker, um, being a social worker means to me, I immediately think about um, our collective potential for making the world a better place you know we all have that potential it doesn't matter necessarily what you're doing occupationally um, we all have a choice and um, and when i think about wanting to do something to make uh, the the place that i'm in the society that i'm in um, a better uh, more equitable more just uh, place to exist and live for us all uh, that aligns pretty closely with my values as a social worker. So uh, I'm I'm not a social worker uh, as much by occupation as I am um, by identity. And it has a lot to do with my efforts um, to uh, improve uh, healthcare, improve society. Those are things that I work in and around um, and to be there for people. Uh, I generally love them. Um, and uh, um, to feel as though I'm, I'm contributing something meaningful so that long after I'm gone, um, I feel like um, it's important to have finished uh, in a way that left a positive mark, not a negative one, and uh, maybe even worse, not, not one uh, at all, but rather uh, to have done something positive that helped other people. And that's what being a social worker means to me. And my, my work uh, and practice have changed quite a bit uh, since I earned the DSW degree. Uh, when I finished my MSW program, which was now 20, 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago, I immediately knew that I wanted to work in healthcare. Um, I've been in and around hospitals quite a bit. Uh, growing up, and I, uh, I love the vibe of the places, I, um, the pulse of them, the energy, sometimes the drama, and also this sense of their um, healthcare facilities and programs being places of potential, um, where people who might not otherwise have been willing to consider changes or talking about changes suddenly wanted to do so. And so I went immediately to work for a healthcare system. And I spent the next 18, 19 years uh, sort of 
polishing my craft, working on how to be the best licensed clinical social worker I could be. And um, I was fortunate enough uh, to learn and grow under a lot of very talented people who showed me the way and uh, helped me to do a better job uh, progressively of working with patients and families, um, including those that looked and sounded and thought very differently uh, than my own lens has allowed me to think and look and sound. And um, I needed uh, help growing into that. And it was a, a, a really supportive place to be. But eventually, um, I wanted more. And I, I started teaching on the side uh, at a university nearby um, and uh, began the process of learning how to do that as well. So I would work full time at the hospital and uh, in its different units and the emergency department, mostly inpatient. Uh, and then a couple of times a year, I would teach and had uh, mentors and others show me how to improve at that. And I reached the point where I felt as though my ability to contribute to um, uh, to the area, um, the people that I cared about, um, the subjects that I was most feeling called to act upon, uh, started to shift so that I had, I started feeling as though I had more of a potential to continue moving the ball in the, in the direction I wanted to move it. If I began transitioning to, um, to teaching from, uh, direct frontline work in the hospital. And uh, that's where the DSW came in. I, I looked around a lot, talked to a lot of people, um, asked myself what it was I was looking for to get out of that. And, and two of the things were the ability uh, to shift to full-time uh, teaching, um, to uh, number two, to elevate, uh, continue elevating my uh, clinical practice because I didn't want to totally leave healthcare. And number three, which sort of surprised me because I'd never thought about it before, was uh, to begin contributing to the profession um, in terms of research. As after 19 years, I felt as though I've learned enough and seen enough that uh, I feel as though I have something to add that can be helpful for other folks coming up and wanting to do the same work. And it's part of what I was talking about earlier, wanting to make um, wanting to make a, a mark and do something positive. And I realized um, I could work really hard in the hospital as I've been doing. And it was important to the lives of the small number of people that I encountered, but probably no one outside of those immediate contacts would um, really benefit from it. And research suddenly seemed to me to be a way that I could expand the lessons I was learning outward and make it possible for other people um, to read my accounts, consider whether or not there was value in them, and to derive lessons that might help them with their own practices. I think what I see as the main benefits of the DSW degree uh, is the opportunity to do for me, each of the three things I, I just mentioned, um, to transition, to grow, to contribute in new ways that you might not have had the opportunity to do beforehand, um, specifically like research, um, and also to continue impacting the lives of the uh, clients and the patients that you are meeting um, with a higher degree of capability for enacting change or supporting others in enacting change. Um, I don't think we ever really stop growing unless we cease to be interested in the thing that uh, we're facing and involved in. And, uh, and I just sort, I sort of felt naturally driven to find ways to continue learning. And I think the DSW was perfect for me because it touched upon all of those things. I was less interested in learning, uh, in earning a PhD degree because that would have required 
uh, relatively higher focus on quantitative research, which I was less uh, motivated to do, and relatively less focus on specifically the qualitative research that I wanted to learn how to do. And it seemed as though that would be a better fit for me since I didn't want to leave practice and I wanted to um, grow as a teacher and as a practitioner and as uh, a research contributor, someone who is capable of hearing and um, doing justice to other people's stories, you know, to helping them tell their stories. And it all seemed to line up really neatly when I looked at uh, what a doctorate of social work offered. So I chose the I chose the DSW program at Rutgers uh, after a long search. Uh, at the time, there were, I think, 20, 25 programs nationally. And they all offered something a little different. I noticed right away in visiting the sites that uh, there wasn't any one model for what the DSW was being used to accomplish. And as I said earlier in the interview, I had some specific needs or rather goals that I wanted to accomplish in going back to school. And I felt really strongly about it. I didn't want to settle. Most of us, I think, don't, if we're fortunate enough uh, to earn a doctorate degree or have the chance to earn a doctorate degree, we're only going to do so once in a lifetime. And so you want to make sure that uh, the focus of the degree is one that really is going to be meaningful to you. You know, it's not just going to be a set of letters. And so I set out looking for a program that I hoped would do each of the three things I previously identified. I wanted to elevate my clinical practice and I needed organized, ongoing clinical studies to do that after 19 years, something intensive that was really going to move the ball for me. Um, I wanted uh, to um, earn a credential that helped me transition from full-time uh, healthcare social work to full-time uh, teaching and research while still leaving my foot in the door at the hospital so I could continue working there and helping uh, patients and their families. And lastly, I wanted something that uh, prepared me specifically for work as a qualitative researcher. I loved uh, telling people, um, working with people and uh, giving them an opportunity, creating a form uh, to allow them to tell their stories. And I, I, I love the idea of being able to disseminate that, disseminate that so that other people could read about it and hear them. And um, part of that is writing. I love writing and uh, I, I wanted to be in a place that sort of nurtured all of those things, made me a better writer, um, introduced me to research and opened the doors to more teaching. And um, I didn't find a good fit, to be honest with you. I went through a lot of different programs and they were strong in one area or strong in another area. Some offered a couple of things that were attractive to me, uh, but it wasn't until I um, looked at the material and the information from Rutgers that I realized that was really where I needed to be. Uh, it was the place that uh, offered uh, intensive preparation for writing improvement, um, introduction for uh, introduction to qualitative research, uh, support launching that, as you learned, uh, that uh, would position me to apply for the teaching, teaching jobs that I wanted to have, and that was clinically focused. And uh, I, the other thing is I also wanted to be there in person. You know, although I live on the West Coast uh, and have no problem with distance learning or online learning and uh, and learned during the pandemic that you can actually pull a lot more out of those experiences than I'd ever really considered before. It wasn't my preferred modality for learning. I really wanted to get back in the class, meet people, be around them, and learn in person. And 
I was shocked to find all of that at Rutgers. I mean, honestly, uh, I found it and then sat on it for a couple of years because I it was on the East Coast. And I thought, well, that's not going to work. I kept looking for things that places that were going to offer what Rutgers was offering, but on the West Coast. And there wasn't anything. And I looked to the middle of the country, there wasn't anything. And I kept coming back to Rutgers and uh, finally realized that I was either going to do it or I wasn't. And the things that I thought were important about studying in the way that uh, the program was designed at Rutgers was either, either something I was going to respond to or I wasn't. And so I took the leap and applied and found myself in a cohort beginning my doctoral studies. I was hired, I began applying for uh, academic positions for full-time teaching while I was still in the program and was fortunate enough to be selected uh, for a tenure track position at a small liberal arts uh, college on the West Coast with uh, a very well-regarded undergraduate social work program no MSW program, but they were wanting to build one. And uh, I began work in 2022 20, as an assistant professor in the social work department for this school. And um, the DSW made it possible to do that in terms of the impact it had. It wasn't, I wouldn't have been qualified to apply had I not earned one. And they hired me a few months before I finished my degree with the understanding that I uh, present evidence that I had completed it. And um, I still remember visiting the campus for my on-site interview. I got the same feeling I got when I walked into the hospital, that it was a place that I needed to be and that there were things there um, waiting to be done. And uh, I love being a part of that. And we're now a few months out from starting uh, the school's first ever MSW program. It'll be joining the BASW program that's already there. And um, we're hiring other faculty to join me so that we have enough people to, uh, to do that important work. And uh, I love the teaching full-time and I'm learning about being uh, a full-time uh, professor. And it turns out there's quite a bit to do. Uh, outside of the classroom and outside of class prep. And I find it interesting and, and vibrant and challenging and time consuming and uh, completely what I'm supposed to be doing. So I have Rutgers and the DSW degree that I earned there to thank for the fact that I'm now doing it. My favorite part of the program was definitely the um, but a couple of things. N number one was the uh, in-class learning that I mentioned earlier. I wasn't wrong about that. I, I noticed it right away, and it was confirmed many times over the, the years that I was there that it just felt meaningful to be in a class um, wrangling with some of the issues and the material that we were dealing with. Um, so the opportunity to study in class um, the opportunity to be tested with challenging questions, uh, to learn what it was like to do research and actually be expected to do it, um, to, to have um, a relatively high bar with regards to those expectations, to feel like you were in a place that was going to help you grow um, because you were expected to and, and not growing um, or just remaining sort of in place where you were at and relying upon what you've always done uh, just wasn't going to be enough that you were going to have to push yourself and try new things and learn from other people and make mistakes. And uh, ultimately, uh, that was what was going to lead you to, to being uh, a better social worker. And uh, they really did that. And so uh, I won't say that it was always easy. And it's, I mean, there were some times that those conversations and um, that growth process was challenging. You know, it's, I think growth, if it's always comfortable to you, you're probably, I would question whether or not 
you're actually experiencing growth. I think growth by nature is sometimes uncomfortable, uh, but it's also, if you're intent on learning and growing, that's necessary. And I really, I really loved how the program was a place where that was possible to achieve. I think the one thing that I would encourage people to consider when they're looking at a DSW, which of course also means looking at where they might earn a DSW, uh, is to, it's really a time to be honest with yourself about what you, um, what you're wanting to do. What is your reason for doing that thing? It should never be uh, a challenge you take on just because you know someone else is taking it on or something you want to do because you've got some time to fill. I, I really think that um, it requires a commitment, but is also one of the most powerful things you can accomplish in your life. And it's up to each person to decide whether or not they're at a point where they can dedicate um, energy and focus and commitment to that. Just not to say that, I mean, we all have busy lives. I mean, it's not to say that you can't go into it with another, a, a number of challenges already happening. You just have to be convinced that in spite of the challenges, whether it's family or work or no matter what you've got going on in your life, that you actually have the reserves necessary to dedicate your time um, to making your doctoral studies important. And if you feel like I am, I am, and I feel an excitement about doing that, um, and maybe a nervousness about being successful at it, then you're probably ready you know, to, uh, to make a commitment to that. And I'd be honest about where you're doing it. I mean, I, I traveled a long ways to complete my do uh, doctoral studies at Rutgers. And um, I'm not recommending everybody do that. But I think what that individual program is offering you is very important. You know, you want to make sure that that program is a good match for who you are uh, and what it is you want to accomplish. And um, that requires talking to the admissions advisors, maybe talking to the director, you know, visiting if you can, uh, learning about the place and its um, its background and its culture and um, what it can bring to you. And, and remember, you know, you'll likely get to do this once. And so you want to make sure you find the thing that's really going to line up for you. And if you do that, um, just remember, um, lastly, that you can do it. Uh, I know a lot of people that that had to really work to get through their program and earn their DSW, and they they came to those programs with all kinds of different talents and backgrounds. And um, you can do it if you decide that uh, it's worth doing and you want to. You, know, you can make it happen. <laughs>